awkward when you forget an author's name because their book bored you so much. Hi guys, it's Leanne and I am finally here today with my January Tops and Bottoms. If you're new here, Tops and Bottoms is a format that I came up with last year for my wrap up. Sometimes you read a bunch of really amazing books in a month and you want to talk about all of them and sometimes you read a bunch of really okay books and you don't really have that much to say. So to avoid me avoiding wrap ups, I decided I was going to make a list of my very top books of the month and my very bottom books of the month and only tell you about them. So on we go before I blether anymore. So sometimes I start with the top books, sometimes I start with the bottom books. This time I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do one and then one of the other one just to confuse you. But I have to start with my absolute top book of January and one of my genuine new favourite books of all time and that is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. As I said before in the rave review that I posted this month for it, it actually looks like this in the UK and this pretty much everywhere else. And this is the story of three brothers who live in a really, really remote part of the outback on a cattle station in Australia. One of the brothers has essentially crawled away from his car in the blistering heat and has curled up to die on an old stockman's grave in the middle of nowhere between all of these properties and nobody knows why. And this is the unpicking of not only Cam's apparent suicide question mark but also of the relationship between the brothers and how the family got where it is now. We mostly follow the story from Nathan's point of view and I just, he is now one of my favourite fictional characters ever. I love him so much. He eschews every toxic masculinity trope that ever existed in a crime or thriller novel and I would tend to say this falls more on the thriller side. It's much less about the investigation and more about the impact on the family and then what the mystery and revelation is at the end. But Nathan in his inner monologue to the reader talks a lot about depression and anxiety and about loneliness and about what the reality is of the expectation that you are a man's man and you can just do the things that you're meant to do. And also of this kind of construct of what it is to be a man's man and what men are taught that they should feel. I didn't guess it. I had theories and all of my theories were proved wrong. Jane Harper is one of those authors who consistently makes me want to go and live in worlds that I never, I, d I don't really want to go and live in an outback cattle station. I would die on the first day in the air conditioning from the heat. I can't, I'm, I'm Scottish. Have you seen? Have you seen? We're not even talking about the vitiligo skin here, we're just talking about the Scottish skin. This was not made for sunshine. But despite that, I, I kind of want to live there because I, I'm so fond of the people and I'm so fond of the land now and oh just... If you're in the mood for a mystery thriller that's mostly family focused and has a unexpected, unintended investigator in it, this is one for you. It's just phenomenal. On the other side of the spectrum, my two worst books, my two bottom books for the month were both DNFs and the first one is Bad Apple. I've forgotten the author's name again because the book was just so incredibly boring that apparently none of the facts will stick in my head. Ah. Zoji Stage is the author's name. I mean, you can see it. I didn't really need to tell you, but nevertheless, Zoji Stage, Bad Apple. Apparently, a story about a little kid who had never spoken a word out loud ever, and I think she's about eight when the story starts. And then her mother has a conversation with her one day. Her mother expresses her frustration, and all of a sudden, the little girl says something, and the thing that she says is so very very sinister that the mother then wonders if she and her husband and you know their family is in imminent danger from this young girl and yeah nah no nah. nope i sat down with this book and within about 15 minutes i was 10 percent in which is unheard of for me because the writing is so basic it is so I said this and she said this and I did that. There is no real descriptiveness in there. 
And by that I don't mean I need it to be literary fiction because we know how I feel on the whole about literary fiction right now. But I need it to be something. <laughs> I need to be orientated and I need to feel like I have some grasp of the scene and where everybody's like, are you sitting? Are you standing? Are you do what is, what's happening? What room are we in? And I just, I never, I, I never got that. And on top of that, the character who we begin with, her internal monologue is just so whiny and so over dramatic. And no, it's not for me. One of my other absolute top reads for the month was Sadie by Courtney Summers. I'm jumping on a massive YA booktube bandwagon with this one because this one has just taken everybody by the throat and like, it's so good. So this book is told from two different perspectives. First of all, we have a podcast documentary maker who is following the story of a little girl who was murdered, Maddie, and her eldest sister, Sadie, who has now gone missing. He has got permission from his podcast producers to chase this down as a story, and so he travels to the very small town that Maddie and Sadie came from and starts to investigate what happened to Maddie and what it subsequently did to Sadie. And then the second perspective that we get breaking in after the first chapter, just like a wave of pain and sass, is Sadie herself. One of the first reasons I think that this book is so popular is because of the dual format that it has. You can actually go onto the publisher's website for free and you can listen to the podcast parts of the book. I originally had the ebook for this but after listening to the first episode I opted to listen on audiobook because I thought you know if I'm listening to one bit I might as well listen to the rest and I am so glad that I made that choice. It was absolutely the best choice I could have made because the actress who plays Sadie is phenomenal. Sadie actually suffers from a stutter and it's physically painful to listen to people not give her the time to get her words out. It's painful to listen to her panic as the words get stuck in her throat because she knows that she's going to be judged, she's going to be made fun of and just not allowed to get her perspective across and because of that listening to her internal monologue versus listening to her speaking out loud to other characters is just amazing. I am so glad that I picked this one up. I think that if you are in the mood for a YA mystery and YA mystery is huge right now that this one is definitely one that you should start with. It reminded me so very much of One of Them is Lying by Karen M. McManus, which is one of my favourite YA mysteries ever, ever. In fact, it's one of my favourite books ever, ever, regardless of what genre you shuffle it into. And next, I've got a bottom that I'm just so sad about. I was gutted when I discovered that I didn't like this book because I was, oh, I had such high hopes that were dashed, dashed at my feet, or well, dashed against the wall which is where the book went after the first chapter or so. This is A Simple Favour by Darcy Bell and by now I am absolutely sure that you will have heard of this book. This one of course has been recently adapted into a movie starring Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick and I'm pleased to say that after I DNF'd the book I then went and watched the movie and the movie was absolutely phenomenal. It is a wild ride and it absolutely strikes the tone that you can see the book reaching for but never quite achieving. So this one is about Emily and Stephanie. Stephanie is a single mum, she has been widowed and she is pretty obsessive about her kid and about his entire life and raising him because it's the only thing that she has left in her life and so the other parents find her obnoxious and she runs a mummy blog online to try and reach out to people which is actually incredibly successful. She then makes very unlikely friends with Emily. Emily is a high flying fashion PA, she doesn't actually need any friends, it just so happens that their kids were friends first and it shoved them together regardless of what they really wanted. And at the beginning of this book we are told that Stephanie has been asked to pick up Emily's kid, that Emily was running late from work and now it is three days later and Emily has not sent any word or come to pick up her son or you know got in touch in any way and she is now missing and Stephanie is telling all of this to her mummy blog. So in the movie Stephanie actually vlogs rather than blogs but I think that's probably just for expedience purposes it's easier 
to show somebody vlogging than it is to narrate them writing blog posts and people's replies. So you probably guessed from my emphasis on the told that that's one of my issues with this book. There's a lot of telling and not a lot of showing and that really peeved me off in the first half of it. I just it's just lazy. It's lazy to show the reader something rather than to construct a short scene where you impart all of that information and also kind of keep us on tenterhooks because this is meant to be a mystery and instead I just felt like I was getting an interviewed account of something that happened. It was this happened and then that happened and then this happened and then she said this and I went oh, and that's that's honestly how I felt. It was just so contrived and that's a shame because now having watched the movie and knowing where the plot eventually would have gone it's such a good plot with so many internal twists. It's not just the twist at the end kind of thriller. There's many many reveals that kind of make you go okay I know what's happening now and then oh, no I don't know what's happening and that just didn't come across in the writing. I never felt excited or surprised or engaged I just kind of felt like okay that's happened let's move on. I also really hated the amount of coincidence that was in this book which seemed to be eliminated in the movie and so therefore you know the same information has been imparted but without the convenience part so obviously it be done. Just saying. And my final top for January is a book which is now also one of my new favourites but <laughs> I actually can't talk about it without getting super emotional so this is going to be interesting. That book is Haima by Nora Krug and this is a really really personal graphic memoir about what it means to be German in the modern world. So Nora Krug grew up in Germany, she's second generation German, very much in the shadow of World War II and she left Germany for the US and now years and years and years later just feels more like an outcast than anything else. And as soon as she was old enough she left and went to America where she kind of hid out from her German roots for a really long time. She found that anytime anybody asked her where her accent was from, assuming Germany, and she confirmed that either they didn't speak to her, they had a bad reaction, or she could just tell that there was judgement there. She found it impossible to join in in traditional German celebrations in New York, which is of course a melting pot for loads of different cultures because the idea of being German and celebrating what it was to be German was such a forbidden thing where she came from at the time that she grew up that she was never able to assimilate it as part of her culture and she kind of grew up hating where she came from and that's something that I can relate so hard to. So Nora decides to trace back her family tree and she does that through wonderful illustrations through these handwritten memoir passages and then from photographs of her family and what their position was in Nazi Germany and the Nazi regime. The end papers are in fact pictures of her family on both sides including the dates of their birth and death and what they did during the war. This is a picture of Nora's village and believe me when I say that it is the only picture in the entire novel that is not confronting so if you feel triggered by the idea of seeing Holocaust pictures or seeing some very graphic imagery surrounding World War II then I would avoid this one sadly. It's a shame that it's not available on audiobook because the memoir part on its own could so easily stand up without the illustrations. Nora talks about things that I just I didn't know about. She grew up post World War II in a world where German schools did not teach their children to be proud of being German. They didn't teach them their national anthem or their German history. They taught them world history and what Germany had done to other people. And Nora and the kids around her very much assimilated this shame. This shame of things that other people had done even though Nora when she finally found out about the Holocaust as a child she immediately knew that it was wrong and she didn't agree with it in any way that she was forced to feel like it was her fault. I think there's so much to say about shame in this book. 
that just won't fit in to a quick tops and bottoms review so if this is something that you feel like you could sit through I absolutely say pick this one up it's a game changer and I'm so so pleased that I read it so that is everything for my tops and bottoms books of the month I hope that you guys enjoyed the return of my wrap ups I certainly did although let's try and get February's out in a more timely manner shall we as always, if you have read any of these books or if you're going to be buying The Lost Man because I freaking told you to, okay? Okay? I'm really sorry I'll stop with the Drag Race references immediately. Then please, please tell me about it in the comments. And if you disagree with me about any of the books that I've mentioned here, please tell me about that in the comments too because opinions live here even if they're not mine. Bye! I feel kind of like a children's TV presenter in this jumper waving goodbye. Bye kids! See you back here tomorrow! for more stabbiness, crime and murder. Blood, death by dehydration. Okay, goodbye. I understand if you don't come back. I'll miss you. Bye.